Hey, greetings everybody, good afternoon, I'm from the mountains of Northern California, welcome to yet another episode of your, well maybe not your first favorite, maybe your second, third, or fourth favorite uh, source of uh, botanical insight as well as uh, smart ass commentary and a current flux of events. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to show you this plant over here, now, this is a common plant, or I just common milkweed, at least uh, uh, if you're on the west coast, uh, it ranges all the way up into uh, British Columbia I believe, you get a lot of it in uh you know central uh central northern california this is the sclepia speciosa it's uh the showy milkweed it's called and you can see i'm looking out on hundreds of plants here okay easily you know this whole they're growing in this little dish right here because they like their feet wet because it does get hot as balls here you have 105 degree days with zero percent humidity in the summer uh, as well as a uh, you know pretty cold winters not the uh, you know, not too much below freezing, but cold enough. You can see it goes, this this little patch goes for upwards of three or four miles down there. And uh, there's easily 20,000 plants here. Now, the reason I'm showing you this plant, even though I've showed it to you before, is because this is my source uh, for seed. I grow a lot of this plant just to uh, plant out illegally, to give to people, uh, mail seeds to a couple people, etc. Now, Asclepia speciosa, since I'm on the West Coast, is a uh, species that's going to do uh, m most best for me. If you're in the Midwest, maybe you got a Asclepia sullivantii or Asclepia uh, syriaca or some of the others, okay? If you're down in Florida, you're going to have a whole host of different milkweed species uh, that uh, would do good for you growing. I always try to stick with... Uh, at least with the milkweeds with native stuff just because it's it's lower maintenance it's more adapted to our dry summers where i am and uh it's going to be more uh, uh just just easier to grow in this kind of climate you know if you grow in a, you live in an area where you've got summer thunderstorms you're going to want a different species if you live in fucking sonora mexico you're going to want a different species and there's a lot of good fucking milkweeds from sonora mexico but the reason i'm showing you this is so that uh you know, I can basically explain to you how the seed collecting process works. Now, I don't come here, you know, to go compulsive shopping in nature and just grab as much as I can. I don't get the hoarder complex. You only need a couple, okay? You only need a couple. And as well as when I'm taking a few of these, I'll sprinkle some about and what this shit so I'm helping a plant uh, spread more of itself as well, okay? And if I can, you know, take them six miles down the road where there's not as many, uh, I'll sprinkle some more there. Uh, so uh, what I'll do, you come back, okay, you can see the flowering now, which means fruit should be ready in about a month or two. You can see these giant, just massive umbels. Look at that, uh, look at those individual flowers again. Now quick banger refresher course to milkweed flower morphology. Those projections pointing up are the hoods, and they can vary in every species of milkweed. No, no two species of milkweeds got the exact same type of hood morphology. And you can see those little, uh, projections coming out of the inside of those hoods are the horns okay now each one of those uh those flowers those individual flowers is called a corona and each umbel has upwards of maybe 20 coronas on there okay now the main uh the part the the female uh parts are inside uh this this little uh, what you call a gynostegium in the center of those five hoods a stigma is inside that little slit right there which you call the stigmatic slit okay and on either side of that stigmatic slit you got uh, what's known as the uh, pollinia pollinium singular pollinia plural and they're basically uh, that goes into a whole other area of uh, expertise with milkweeds where they, you know milkweeds don't produce pollen in individual you know hundreds of individual grains their pollen is aggregated together in a structure called the pollinium okay and uh, the pollinia looks like a little boomerang Okay, and you got one, uh, it looks like a boomerang with the apex of the boomerang at the top of that slit and then each leg of the boomerang on either side of that slit. And what an insect's got to do is stick uh, his or her little uh, goddamn uh, leg inside that stigmatic slit, get it stuck, and when he pulls that leg out, uh, you'll, get the, you'll get the pollinium uh, on, uh, you'll get it, have a pollinium on his leg, okay? And sometimes if the bee is not big enough to pull his leg out, uh, that little uh, slit, he gets stuck, and then a bird comes by and eats him. And uh, what you're left with is just a little leg that look, kind of looks like the the sexy leg lamp from the 1980 children's classic, 1980s children's classic, A Christmas Story. Remember when a dad got that leg lamp? 
and put it. It was a very, very exquisite piece of furniture right there. Love to get one myself. Anyway, so these things are flowering now. They're a tremendous source of nectar. Everyone always mentions the importance for the monarchs and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not downplaying the importance of these plants for monarch butterflies, but there's a lot more going on here that's, you know, ecologically important than just them being a host plant for monarchs, which of course is, yes, important. The monarchs, uh, you know, nibble on these goddamn leaves. Uh, milkweeds uh, possess within their tissues what's known as cardiac glycosides. They're very toxic uh, milky latex, and uh, the monarch will basically bioaccumulate that in its tissues so that if a bird eats it, uh, the monarch will prove to be poisonous to the bird, make the bird wretch and a barf and the... Uh, there you go. It basically discourages birds and other animals from eating monarchs. Okay? The pipe vine swallowtail butterflies do that with the Dutchman's pipe in the genus Aristolochia uh, as well. It's a whole other unrelated plant family, but very, very cool plant. And maybe I'll do a video on that one day. Anyway, the, the point I'm getting to is that these flowers are getting pollinated right now on these, you know, 10 or 20,000 plants on this three or four mile stretch of highway. And about in a month or two, They'll produce follicles. Now, the follicles is just a fancy word for milkweed fruit, okay? And uh, let's see, I don't even think there's any developing yet. We're still pretty early. But uh, so the follicles will develop, and they look like kind of like a paisley, okay? And they're about four or five inches long, uh, between three and five inches long. Each follicle has upwards of, I don't know, 50 to 100 seeds inside. And the seeds, of course, are attached to the cottony shit, uh, you know, known as a coma, that cottony stuff that helps these seeds blow around in the wind is known as a coma, is the coma. So uh, you come by, you know, you pick, you spend five minutes out here and you pick maybe, I don't know, 10 or 20 follicles, you'll have more than enough seed to, to share with friends, to grow yourself, etc. Now the way you grow this seed, you know, it, it plants from cold climates uh, normally need uh, something called stratification, which is you just take the seed, you put it in a, in a in a bag with some sand, moisten the sand a little bit. Okay, you want the, the sand to be wet, but you don't want you know water pooling up in a bag. And then you throw that in the fridge for uh, two or three weeks. Some species of plants need it longer. Milkweed normally only this species at least only needs a week or two. And I've had them germinate without any any stratification too. But you're going to improve the germination rate immensely if you give it a week in a fridge in a sandy bag. Okay? And it'd be the sandybag.com. Kick me in the sandy bags, a new novel by Daniel Steele. Anyway, uh, so you got the seeds in the sandy bag. Take them out, throw them in some. I just throw, you know, uh, maybe 20, 30 seeds all in the same pot uh, and then grow them up. They'll germinate. Uh, when they germinate, you want to keep the soil surface cool. Uh, not cool, dry, excuse me, and you want to water them from the bottom, okay, because they will uh, damp off. Damping off is just a, a fancy word to say, uh, it's not even a fancy, actually, it's pretty low class, so uh, whatever, anyway, it fits right in with the uh, tagline of the show. So, damping off is just a word for the, for basically the seeds rotting. They just get too wet, they don't have a, their, their tissue is not hardened off, the, where the stem tissue meets the soil yet, and so they will rot. The fungus gets them and they rot, okay? So you, once they germinate, you keep that soil dry. You can water it the first, you know, a couple of days after they germinate, but then you keep that soil dry, and what I do is I water them from the bottom. So I'll put them in a little tray, and I'll pour the water in the tray. You're like, you know, it looks like a little dish. You could get them at home desk, but for 40 cents each, and then just uh, water it from the bottom and that's basically, at least with this species, what's going on here is this, they are just, they got their, their roots wet, but where the shoot actually meets the goddamn soil, where the stem meets the soil, it's pretty dry, okay? And then uh, once they get bigger, you can uh, separate them individually, you do it in a shady, cool place, okay? And then uh, once you separate them individually, technically you want to keep them, uh, you want to keep them dry, not dry, uh, shady. And cool for maybe a week afterwards just because they're going to be shocked you are messing with the roots depending on the level of how how much you fuck with the roots when you're potting them up as seedlings and then uh, there you go and you go plant them in a park or something and uh and you you establish new milkweed population great uh, great plant here for illegal planting for unauthorized planting okay and again they're perennial so they'll come back every year Okay, they get that big tuber in the ground. The tops will die in the fall, and but that tuber will still be there. And then, of course, 
with many milkweeds, this species included, they just send up lateral uh, lateral shoots. So it'll be the same plant, but it'll have, you know, sometimes 20 or 30 shoots coming from the same root system. Okay? Look at this, uh, Sedalcia oregana. Nice member of the mallow family here. Also tends to like the more uh, riparian areas. Cotton family, mallow family. As you can see from those uh, those five petals, and you get really close, you can see that the androgynophore. Oh, there you go. Huh? See all those uh, little red dot stamens sharing the same uh, columnar structure with that uh, stigma that's up top that you can't see that well because the resolution's bad because I took the fucking... Uh, image stabilization off and now it's just shaking, but you got to take the image stabilization off to get up close to show you the good money shots, okay? For the good porn. For the good flo floral porn. Floralporn.com Okay, well, I went ahead and uh, took apart one of those flowers. What you're looking at, that yellow thing, the yellow thing is an individual... Uh, Polinium. Okay, and I just pulled that out of the stigmatic so you could see I got the hood removed. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have my hand lens on me, so I can't show you. But this, uh, despite the uh, trembling from the four cups of coffee I've had today, uh, hopefully you can still see what the goddamn uh, polinium looks like. You get the idea. And on the other side of that stigmatic slit, there'll be another one of those uh, yellow uh, rectangular things that's kind of tapered at the top. And you can see it's held on to that translator apparatus by a little arm. Okay, so let's go over to the uh, flower morphology again. You can see it's so hot the fucking uh, petals are starting to uh, to wither a little bit. So you got the petals right here, all recurved nice. This whole structure is called the gynostegium. This whole structure, the gutter is called the corona. You got uh, the hoods right there, which remember, they look different in every species of milkweed. You got the horns, that little black bead's called the uh, corpusculum, and then you got the individual polinium right there, that little yellow globular thing that's a little bit the shiny, and you got a polinium on either side of that stigmatic slit right there. Together they're known as the pollinia, plural. Orchids get the, those things too, and again, remember, they're just a bunch of, the, a bunch of pollen grains aggregated into an individual nodule, okay? And again, orchid flowers, like I said, get the same thing. Orchids and milkweeds, completely unrelated, just evolved uh, this sort of method of transferring pollen uh, convergently. It's just, you know, convergent evolution, okay? No relation, just uh, just similar similar habits, similar behavior. And then again, yeah, like I said, you got the hoods and those horns, those little needle-like things coming out. And not all milkweeds have horns like that, okay? Some milkweeds don't have any horns. So there you go. All right. So I'm going to come back here in August, maybe early September. I'm going to grab a couple of these damn follicles, the fruits up here, get a ton of seed, you know, save it for uh, early spring. Maybe I'll start a couple just for shits and giggles inside and uh, and grow a couple up. And uh, there you go. Okay. Maybe I'll mail some to friends. Okay. And then, of course, the seedlings I, I grow from these, I'll plant out give to people for their yards, whatever the shit, okay? You know, plant them out in a cityscape, you know, of course, site selection is important, you got to figure, uh, you know, what's going to be less likely to get fucked with by some uh, Karen, uh, some bored Karen, what's going to be uh, more likely to survive, you know, mowing, etc. I find sneaking them into little, uh, you know, landscape beds that are already taken care of uh, works pretty well, and maybe I'll put a little stake or something next to it so if the you know the landscape bed is a contractor or someone's taking care of it hopefully they won't fuck with it you know if they know it's intentional and not a weed so or even you could just ask you could always do that you could always ask permission however uh, normally i just ask uh, you know i deal with it as it comes but uh certainly you ask uh, you know maybe there's a business it's got a landscape bed it's got a bunch of tacky bullshit in there you could say we want to throw some of these in would it be okay? They're milkweeds, whatever. If they're a problem, I'll come remove them, whatever, you know. You certainly get some for your yard. Almost all the Asclepias like full sun. You're going to have to take that into account, too. All right? 
But uh, you know, this is this is the best way to get to know a plant. You grow it up. Okay, fuck making potions out of it. Grow it up, propagate it. Okay, see uh, what it responds to. Uh, you know, what it benefits from, what it doesn't like. Maybe you kill a few a few of them. Who gives a fuck? Keep going. You know, just keep doing it. So there you go. All right. Certainly, you got to grow more of the milkweeds. Those those umbels, those inflorescences, those massive flower heads are an important such, uh, source of nectar for the insects, which then the birds eat. Important uh, food source for, you know, just I mean, you just you're benefiting the ecology by growing more of these things. It's not about just making a fucking showy plant for people to enjoy. You're actually, you know, we're storing habitat in the big shitty city or the depressing bleak suburb, whichever one. Take your pick. Okay. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Uh, grab some milkweed seeds. Go fuck yourself. Bye.